You are actually creating your own personal universe within the universe that you live in. Whatever your focus is, is what you'll be seeing in the news, is who your cab driver will be, is how your day will be, is how your friendships will be. You can live this magical, beautiful, wonderful life in the midst uh, of all kinds of tragedy going on, uh, and it will not be revealed to you or coming to you in your own experience. Hello, Robin. A warm welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. I am curious to see where our conversation will go today, because I know you are a channeler of Athena in Truth. And actually, we have met up before where you channeled for me. It was a private session, and that was very interesting. And I've also been on your show because you have your own show. And you're also the author of Choose Your Universe. And I really love that title. So uh, first, I would love to dive into actually how this journey started for you, because First, I've never heard of Athena in truth. Mm -hmm. And have you always been spiritual or is this something that all of a sudden opened up within you? Yeah, well, I would say since my early 20s, I've been on a spiritual path. I always loved reading about everything to do with spirituality. I've read um, hundreds of books. I just have volumes of things that I had gone through. And I did that primarily all uh, through my 20s and up to 40. You know, I was raising my kids. We were running a business. So um, just primarily reading and studying was just a passion and just something I enjoyed as a hobby, I would say that. Um, and then um, when my kids went off to college and I started to uh, grieve that, really, I really missed them. It was a big part of my life. And, you know, I started to wonder what life was all about. Would I still know who, who I am after I pass? What is this about? What, you know, why am I here? Where am I headed? You know, all these kinds of questions were coming to my mind. Um, and what I've learned since then is when you pose a question uh, to yourself, you're really posing it to the universe and the universe really wants to satisfy you. It wants to give you answers to what it is that you're inquiring about. Um, and so uh, in that quest, um, I uh, met a channeler myself. Actually, she became a very good friend of mine and I had a lot of sessions with her and I found great value in what it is that we exchanged and um, learned a lot about how I create the experience that I'm having based upon how I pick and choose. That's the name of my book, Choose Your Universe, how I feel um, about what it is that I am deciding to agree with in the way that I'm emoting. And so I started to get this understanding that things were not happening randomly and I wasn't actually being victimized like I might have thought that I was. Um, and then from there, uh, I, I really got on a spiritual path of... Um, uh, studying kundalini energy. I was very interested in the chakras. It was something that I was always drawn to. And I believe uh, as a human, um, we all have our own path and we should honor that. And for me, that is what I was drawn to. So I, I'm in no way trying to tell someone that this is the thing you should do if you want to awaken your kundalini. It worked for me. But um, my kundalini might have awakened uh, for a number of reasons that maybe I'll never know the answer to. I used to say, I don't know if it's chasing me or I'm chasing it. Uh, I now know that there's a lot of people that have a Kundalini awakening, which occurred to me in my uh, mid forties uh, that have never studied or done a practice. They walk out their door and trip on something and set off their Kundalini. So if it in fact had anything to do with a, a practice or where we were at spiritually, um, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because there's so many different ways that this energy awakens in people. There are monks that meditate their entire life and, and never get an activation. And so um, if we are to uh, judge it by um, effort, efforting uh, or worthiness um, doesn't really make a lot of sense. It just seems to be the evolution of your soul is something that occurs when the timing is right. And apparently the timing was right for me in my mid forties. And, you know, I went through all aspects of that energy. I, I went through the dark night of the soul that went on for a couple of years. I had a lot of trapped energy. I had no idea when that energy took off that it would actually accelerate negativity within me. And so whatever I was holding in my energy centers, uh, I started kicking off a lot of negative experiences. It was very painful. I didn't really enjoy life uh, for a couple of years. Um, lost interest in a lot of things that I used to take interest in. Uh, 
friendships kind of changed, things flattened out that uh, I used to find enjoyable. And, and so it was just a kind of a difficult period. So I really understand all aspects of that energy. And it's, it's primarily what I'm moving to in the teaching that I do. I do Kundalini activations for people, um, uh, help them lift off entrapments that are in the energy centers, because I've realized that these hold the key uh, of what allows energy into us. And so if we hold things that are uh, traumatizing or painful experiences um, and even perceptions of what our life should be like, um, these are all thought forms that are contained within the energy centers and actually prevent the flow of the divine coming in with the very satisfying experiences that we would otherwise get very naturally. So a big part of my work that I do um, is assisting people in opening up their field, getting uh, entrapments out of their energy centers, allowing more flow to get in, and then um, completing that process with an activation because I do have fully activated Kundalini that's reached the crown now. It took over 25 years for me to do that. Again, that's not the case for everybody. Um, it's happening at an accelerated rate right now because the vibration of the planet is rising, and that's a stimulate to everyone's energy centers. And the more people that are doing this work that are actually opening themselves up are walking around and activating people, and, and no one really even knows that it's going on, but it is, you see. Very interesting. Um, I thought perhaps we were going to speak about channeling today, but now I get really curious to hear more about Kundalini awakening. Yeah. And that's something I haven't really covered that much on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was new to me that you had had a Kundalini awakening before I started doing research on you yeah. earlier this morning. Yeah. And uh, you said that it was difficult <clears throat> and challenging to go through. Uh, didn't sound very pleasant. Now, yeah. why? What? What is good with having a Kundalini awakening, yeah. to be honest? Well, uh, you know, I've come to understand uh, the reason that I had the, the dark night of the soul and the uh, experiences that I've had is because this uh, teaching or the way that I'm going to be um, communicating with people uh, really requires me to know every aspect of that energy. And believe me, I do. I've experienced the Kriyas, the, uh, which are spontaneous movements, uh, automatic mudras with the hands, all of these types of uh, siddhas, uh, spiritual, what you would call gifts or uh, things that happen uh, to a human because they have activated this energy. Um, so what is the Kundalini energy? Well, it's, it's a divine feminine energy. It's the Shakti energy that sits at the base of the spine of every human. And so it's a universal consciousness of which everyone has. When that consciousness will enact is different in everyone. Uh, but when it does, um, it, it will cause a lot of uh, self-reflection, observation. Um, in the beginning, a lot of judgment, condemnation when you see things about yourself that you don't like. Uh, so it's going to kick off uh, a lot of acceleration of experiences that can be unpleasant. Um, there are some people who do a lot of work on themselves prior to having that energy raise and therefore have removed a lot of negativity from their systems. And they just have a very smooth, natural, uh, warm kind of rise and they don't go through the dark night of the soul because they've that's primarily brought on uh, by a kickoff of negativity that's stored within you um and and so it, it's hard to tell how long that's going to last based upon what each person has encountered in their lives their past life their lineage all of that plays a part in the amount of suffering um, that might be contained in the vessel that is them um, and so what really happens when uh, that energy uh, takes off uh, there's a, a dramatic rise um, and it, you'll feel it puncture each one of the energy centers and then it'll go up to the top of the head um, and then there'll be this explosion uh, there's a lot of noise a lot of hummingbird sound a lot of buzzing um, a lot of uh, uh, sensation as it pe uh, pierces the energy centers you can feel it backing up if it hits a blockage uh, and then it will pour back down through all of the energy centers and it'll, it'll make a whooshing sound and it'll feel like a hot lava that actually very pleasant pours down through your body and then the whole thing ends with a full body orgasm and you're laying there thinking well what the hell just happened here uh, so that and 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 people don't don't realize that they, they think an orgasm exists in the uh, in the base, but every energy center is uh, capable of that um, sensation, and that is the universal uh, consciousness of the divine feminine, uh, or uh, what the universe is about. Really, it's a powerful electrical charge of energy uh, that creates a very euphoric state. Um, and so, once this uh, energy does this dramatic rise, a lot of people will think, "Wow, I I've got it made now. I just had a Kundalini awakening. I'm gonna." be the most spiritual person in the world and get everything I want. Some people uh, look at it this way, but really the work has just begun. Uh, that happened and it took over 25 years uh, for that energy to rattle through my system uh, with a lot of Kriyas. If you look that up, there, it's a lot of uh, shaking, uh, a lot of crying, a lot of uh, extensive yawning, uh, eye leaking. There's all kinds of uh, bodily sensations that come with that energy and, and a real um, encouragement within you to sit and to allow this to happen. It's like the energy 
uh, merges with you. And so your consciousness, you're, you're running your body, you're projecting yourself into the body that you're in. So in some sense, you are a channeler. And so when you awaken this uh, divine feminine Kundalini energy, you're inviting another consciousness that's actually going to run alongside of yours that has the ability to bring in the soul aspect of you and unite you with that. Uh, when that actually occurs, what happens is you get very fluid speaking, you get a great magnetism, uh, it creates uh, pe an attraction, uh, people coming to you, you walk around, uh, you are lifting vibration and activating people because of that energy. And so what, what actually occurs is Robin gets a good flow now because she's connected to the divine part of herself. Uh, that Kundalini energy being released is an attractive quality to those that want to teach through the vessel. It's one of the reasons I became a channeler. Um, all channelers are, are not Kundalini activated, but the ones that are, are sought after because the energy is magnetizing. It's one that creates uh, uh, great numbers uh, to come to it. And this is what is attractive to a group that wants to channel through someone who has active Kundalini. Basically, uh, when someone activates their Kundalini, um, you're going to be in service. There's just no way about it. It's an energy that moves you. You're compelled uh, to do what it is that you have come here to do. And so even though you don't really like people knowing you, not as Robin anymore, anymore and thinking you're crazy sometimes, you don't really care about that anymore because this energy has an influence over you that lets you put that aside and go on to do the work that you were meant to do. Uh, so I would say that was a, a natural evolution that happened within a year or two. It took a couple of years. There was a lot of uh, discomfort with it and wondering how people were going to perceive me uh, now that they see me doing what I'm doing. And it's quite different than what I did as Robin. Um, but what I, the reason I'm doing it, uh, let's just talk about that for a moment, is uh, the satisfaction that comes to one that unites themselves with the soul aspect of themselves is indescribable. It's a level of connection and happiness uh, and ability to manifest uh, and create beyond anything that you can imagine for yourself. So I would like more people to experience it, and I would like to assist uh, in raising the consciousness of humanity uh, in that goal or desire. Very fascinating. Um, I get curious about this feminine Kundalini energy. If that is uh, a part of our soul's evolution, so that either in this life or maybe a previous life, I don't know, or a future life, we all will experience a Kundalini awakening uh, because it's part of the evolution. Or is this something that only a few souls are experiencing sort of as like a spiritual gift that some souls like opt into having yeah. an experience of? Yeah. Uh, well, there is no um, superior person or uh, someone that's going to be selected. Let's use that example. Um, everybody's worthy. Uh, that And what motivates the Kundalini energy is, is desire. What motivates a female? She wants to be uh, admired, looked at, uh, noticed. Uh, this is part of the fem divine feminine energy. And the Kundalini energy is no different. <clears throat> when you start to notice her, uh, worship her a little bit, uh, and and cultivate uh, your um, connection to her or your uh, relationship with it, uh, that's actually a stimulant. That's the thing that actually gets the energy's attention and starts moving it up the spine. Um, and oftentimes you won't even know that's happening. What will be marked by it is a great increase or a desire in spirituality in that direction. Uh, a lot of people don't understand why they got this thirst or this desire to get on this path, read everything, learn as much as they can. Uh, it's it's insatiable. You probably know yourself because you've been on it. And so that, that energy is stirring. Uh, that's the creator of that of, of that desire that you have to know yourself in that way, um, and so uh, uh, it's just a uh, it's it's something that's going to happen to you once, and it's going to happen to everybody eventually. Yes, mm -hmm. and in this acceleration period, uh, now that the vibration of the planet is rising, uh, that's a stimulant to energy centers. So it's gonna, you're going to see more and more people waking up and having that activation occur, and that's one of the jobs or um, things that I'm doing uh, in the work that I do. Mm. Very interesting what you said about orgasm, that that is not just in the base chakra, but all other areas as well. Yeah. Uh, I hope that YouTube is not banning us now because we mentioned the <laughs> word. I, I never know. They're so... Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's widely expressed on the internet. You know, they talk a lot about tantric sex. A lot of people don't know what it is, but it's actually using that energy. It's using the sexual energy as a tool, as, as a powerful tool to actually open up the energy centers. So uh, it's, it's no surprise. You can read it anywhere that you can direct that energy. You can get the ability yeah. to direct it. There are techniques and ways that you can do that. And you drive it up the energy centers is what you do. And it's, it's a way of opening and, um, 
there's no shame in it. There's no uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, what will happen is as you open up your energy centers, you actually allow more uh, access to yourself from the divine. Uh, when a human contains a lot of energetic entrapments or traumas or emotions or dissatisfactions in their life, those are taking up space. They're actually in the energy center and they slow it down, first of all sometimes stop it completely. Uh, and that spin is actually a sucking uh, or creates a suction. It actually pulls energy into it and it also funds the other uh, centers within the body. Uh, so initially a human, what might, what might they notice if they have an energetic emblackment, a little block in there? Well, they might be getting, uh, not getting what they want in their life in certain areas. Uh, they might be getting some unpleasant experiences in certain areas. Uh, they might ignore that uh, for quite a few years and then they might get pain in some of those areas. Areas. And then if they ignore that, they might all of a sudden out of the blue say, I got an illness. Where did that come from? Uh, well, it came from a lot of ignoring along the way. Uh, and this energy slowdown, um, it actually starts to uh, deprive the human vessel of the life force energy that is needed for health and wellness. And so by opening the energy centers, uh, and allowing more flow to come in, there's more vibrancy, there's more health, there's more satisfaction, there's more experiences that are coming that are aligned to what you are wanting to experience in your life. So these are, we don't uh, get denied our divinity, we deny it in ourselves based upon what we hold or what we decide to hold. So once you get this understanding that you are a feeler and releaser, you came here to feel your experience and then release energy to the universe. You didn't come here to feel and then clog yourself up with what you are feeling and hold on to it and get mirrored uh, results of that feeling over and over and over again in unpleasantness, that's not why you came. So once you start to uh, notice what it is that you are feeling uh, and observe yourself in it in non-judgment or condemnation, not in trying to try uh, change it or deny it in any way, because I'll just make the human clamp down more. Uh, I love you for what you are feeling. I understand. I look at my life experience in, in the parenting that I had, in the jobs that I had, in the life that I have lived. I can totally see where my human has drawn that feeling or conclusion because of it. It's okay. There's no negative feeling. There's no bad, no right or wrong. And in that way, the human will release uh, that energy as it was meant to. And then you will become more uh, lighter and aligned and the energy center will start pumping. Yeah. And then things will just start flowing to you uh, that you will really be satisfied by. So just so I understand you correctly, back to the orgasm thing, is it so well, you can't get by that thing, can you? Huh? You're having trouble getting by that one, aren't you? That's yeah, I, I just want for people to understand, you know, yeah. like, okay, so how, I want to move over to Athena very soon, but how can I have these divine experiences in different chakras? Like, is it about opening up? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Like, well, you're getting an allowing myself to yeah. really, you know, let this feeling be unfold? Yeah. Well, once you have exposed yourself to information, energy that's what it is yeah so now you have energy you have you have a new awareness you have an uh, ability to know by what you have received here today that you have that possibility and so as you open to that and this is what expansion of consciousness is it's the understanding oh that that resonates with me i i, I can right. see where that is possible and so as you open to that perception then uh situations and circumstances present themselves through tantric learning, through uh, reading, through study uh, of how to conduct uh, yourself so that you can actually use that energy uh, through your breath and focus and to actually bring it up through the other energy centers and make that a possibility in your life. Yeah. That's Wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I want to move over to, to Athena. Uh, so who are Athena? Are they called uh, Athena in truth or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so but could you yeah. please share who they are and where they come from and how they came to you? Yeah, uh, we always answer this question with a question and you're going to get a chuckle out of it. But we would ask you, who are you? If you didn't have a name, if you just looked at yourself in the vessel that you are in, where do you come from? Who are you really? Uh, you're taking on a name that someone has given you and you are believing that it is so, that that is you, but that isn't really you, who you are, is it? Yeah. And so when you ask us who we are, uh, we are the same as you in that respect. But what we would tell you that uh, is that everything belongs to a stream of consciousness. And Robin was struggling a little bit uh, in her life, uh, early 60s. Uh, she wasn't very confident. She lacked some confidence. Came from uh, being a chubby little child, getting picked on a little bit. Uh, and even though she isn't that anymore, uh, just something that stuck 
in her, was in her energy centers, and therefore uh, reflected to her in some of her experiences, not confident. Yeah, she didn't like the feel of that. Uh, and she sat down in her room one day and, and was sitting on her mat and said to herself, yeah, when, is, when am I going to be confident uh, coming to the end of my tennis racket handle? Yeah, in my life, she played a lot of tennis. She's very good at it, uh, but she didn't always feel confident uh, when she would come up against people. And because of that, sometimes her skills would falter a little bit. And so as she posed this question, I, Athena, gave her breath, threw her head back and said to her, how do you like the way it feels to be a woman in her power? So am I Athena the god? Am I actually saying that I am uh, this uh, being? Not really, uh, but what I am saying is that Athena the God belonged to a stream of consciousness of which confidence was a part of. And as Robin made a call out to the universe to be more confident, this is the energy that met her or the stream of consciousness that she got access to. Yeah. And so whether you realize it or not, in the way that you feel in your life, in the way that you desire to feel or call out to the universe, you are tapping into streams of consciousness. You are pulling in aspects to yourself that you would like to experience in the form that you're in. All right. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. I, I didn't know you were going to all of a sudden show up. I'm excited about that. Would it be possible for me to ask you directly some questions? Absolutely. Wonderful. I've received some questions from my audience and I would like to honor that. So one of the questions that came in is about the Mandel, mandala, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, the Mandela effect, yes. uh, whether that is real. Yes, uh, we would answer that with a yes. Mm. Yeah, we are familiar with it. There are all levels uh, of expression and consciousness going on at the same time uh, while you are focused in the present reality you are in. Yeah. Then it's real. That's wow. Yes. That's quite mystical. All right. Over to the next one. Uh, is Darwin's theory correct in terms of human evolution? Hmm. Uh, we are not sure if we should say uh, it is total uh, the way that you are uh, projecting it or uh, written about it. Let's use that term. Yeah. Uh, that a human has the ability uh, to project its consciousness into many different things as it expresses as a human, it could be expressing itself uh, a small portion of its consciousness, let's say in a tree or in a rock or in, a, in an animal, in its own pet sometimes. You've probably noticed that we've said this before in recordings that a human will have a dog or a cat uh, and this uh, characteristically will take on uh, much of their personality or the way about them, you see. And this is because of the, of the human has actually chosen to project a portion of its consciousness into the pet, therefore feels very aligned to it because it is likened to them or uh, like them. Yeah. And so uh, we would tell you that uh, this uh, Darwin's uh, uh, process or are, are you referring to the evolution of an ape into to a human is this what you are referring to what is the uh description of that we are not completely clear uh i'm not sure actually it, it is uh one viewer on on my channel that is asking the question so that's all i got actually is darwin's theory correct in terms of human yeah. evolution yeah yeah so uh we would say our description of human evolution uh would be the human's level of consciousness of which it projects into uh all things yeah mm-hmm all right. What to know about what's coming? A lot of people are talking about that we will meet a lot of controversy and difficulties coming now in the future, since we are in this big shift of consciousness. How can we prepare ourselves for that and what is coming? Mm -hmm. uh, well, we would tell you that uh, each of you is creating sovereignly. And what we mean by that is you have the ability to apply your focus in a direction that you would like to see in the world and have others view it and decide whether or not they would join that in the same uh, way or uh, uh, desire. Let's use that. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes a human will look out into the masses or what's going on in the world and then become fearful, uh, become uh, uh, negative. Uh, worrisome, uh, troubled, uh, all of these types of things. And this is the energetic output or what the universe then returns on. It will create actually more results that would create that type of feeling or expression that you are actually giving to it, you see. So the only real chance you have is uh, the control of your own focus, how you would like to feel in the world, what you would like to see in the world, rather than what it is you are choosing to view uh, in your belief of it, in your perception of it. Uh, it's never really about whether something is true or false. Uh, it's about what you believe that creates reality and brings it to form. And so even in your own life, 
as you focus on something, as you believe in something, uh, this is how you create the expression that you have. You would agree that when you look around at all of the people that are living their lives, that there are some living in poverty and some living in bounty, some living in health and some living in not health. And so there is this huge variety uh, of streams of consciousness that people dip into based upon their level of focus or the emotions that they are holding within themselves. And so the only way that uh, you can be a real uh, advocate for good in the world is to be focused upon it. If you continue to use other people, uh, other evidence as a reason to not feel good in your own experience, this will be your addition uh, to all that is, and it will be your addition to the world that you live in. I have a question that I've been wondering about. So all humans living on earth right now, is it so that we're living in different realities, sort of in the same reality, that there are many different realities, which mean that, let's say that I didn't have any negativity inside, mm -hmm. I had only positive thoughts, which yes. is probably not possible, yeah. but what if that was the case? Would I then see the same things on the news, for instance, to, to take a, an example like that, mm -hmm. like other people who would have a reality of fear, like a fair based yeah. mindset. Yeah, you can actually, uh, good question, by the way, uh, and one that would be of great value to your listeners, because you can actually create a cocoon around yourself. Uh, this is why we wrote our book again called Choose Your Universe, because you are actually creating your own personal universe within the universe that you live in. And so, yes, uh, whatever your focus is, is what you'll be seeing in the news, is who your cab driver will be, is how your day will be, is how your friendships will be. All of it will be uh, related to the way that you have chosen personally in the way that you feel in your experience and therefore the universe will support you in every direction of that endeavor yeah wow and so this is why we tell uh, humans that you can live this magical beautiful wonderful life in the midst uh, of all kinds of tragedy going on uh, and it will not be revealed to you or coming to you in your own experience Right. And somehow I feel guilty if I would do that, not uh, acknowledging the suffering around me. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we are here to remove that guilt today and let you know that the most powerful thing that you could do in the creation of yourself in the universe uh, is to never feel guilty. Because you are showing them by your focus what's possible for them. How could that be something to feel guilty about? Well, when I see that there's so much suffering, I sort of feel like I should take that in, like take in yeah. the suffering, take, feel what so they're feeling. Take the suffering in, yeah. You feel the uh, misery, uh, the emotions of it. Now, remember that the universe is returning individually to each person. Each soul is sovereign. And so as you feel terrible, no matter how you justify it, it doesn't matter. There's no right and wrong. You have to let go of that. That's the biggest thing that humans struggle with is right and wrong. Once you can let go of that, this is where freedom is. This is where happiness is, where joy is. Once you let go of the idea uh, that there's something bad going on or right or wrong, uh, this is when your whole uh, consciousness will start to expand in, in a whole new direction. You simply cannot get uh, the world that you want to get as you are focused with your own feelings in opposite of that because the universe is going to return experiences to you to support what you hold it doesn't care whether it's true or not or right or wrong it's simply a mirror a mirror back at you what you're contributing to it you see hmm. now why uh, well, well, why is there so much fear on this planet and why are we not receiving more help to open up more to love? Like, it seemed like the fear is that's where we're going all the time again and again. Like how to shift this without actually opening the veil totally so we all can get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, quite honestly, uh, your news is not re representative of the large numbers that are not feeling and thinking in that way. And so actually what you are portraying, not you personally or your news or uh, all of it, uh, is portraying is yet, is, is yet a smaller number than what you are actually uh, realizing it is. Yeah. And so uh, what we would tell you is that um, as, as you begin to focus uh, in this new way, you move out of uh, third dimensional reality. Let's talk about that for a moment because it's important that people understand how this works. So 
when one is fearful, uh, when one is jealous, angry, lackey, you're living in the first three lower energy centers. Uh, and this is where I have to effort my experience. This is where I have to be careful. I have to be in control. I have to guard. Uh, there are all kinds of things. And, and when you're living in the three energy centers, quite honestly, you need to do those things because effort is the only way you're going to get anywhere because you don't understand that you have the ability to create yet. And you feel as though everything outside of you is an influence on you or affecting you. And you feel victimized by your experience and therefore not in control of it. And that would be third dimensional reality. And, and so in some sense, you're surmising that the mass population is in third density reality when in fact they're not. The mass population right now is moving through and into fourth dimensional reality and many have passed into the fifth dimension and let me explain what that would feel like and so as a human goes into fourth dimensional reality they start to realize ah I think I might be creating my own experience. I've heard a few things. I've read a few things. I've focused in a way that I've kind of got some things that I like in my experience. And, and I start to embody the idea, just like we talked about uh, orgasm and other energy centers. I start to explore the idea, the perception that I might create my own reality. And therefore, I start to expand into that. As I expand into that, the universe hears me and it starts to respond to me and it starts to assist me in my belief, in my knowing, in my power that I'm creating my own reality. But the first thing you do when you're entering into fourth dimensional reality is you move to judgment and condemnation of yourself. You start to view all of the things. You're starting to observe yourself, which is good. That's the first sign you're moving up, but you judge it, you condemn it, and you do it to others too. This is a very natural process. It's not something to frown on or look down on or think that you're backsliding or you're not doing the right thing. This is like going through puberty. It's like you're gradually moving up into the second uh, the fourth dimension. And so what is fifth dimensional reality? Fifth dimensional reality starts to go to a whole new level. It starts to observe itself minus condemnation, minus judgment. It starts to love itself. It starts to realize that it has a right to experience and it has a right to feel how it feels its experience. It doesn't attach to it. It becomes very de dis distanced from the human, uh, not in a bad way, in a very good feeling way. Ah, I see what you're doing there. I know why you did it. I understand you. I love you for the energy you're putting out. And it immediately moves to the preference. Fifth dimensional mastery is what we call it, is that I have an observation of myself I don't condemn it. I don't judge it. I don't do it to anyone else anymore either. I just simply notice that this is the human experience and I surrender to it, put my arms up to it, let it happen. And then as I release it, I think, ah, I wonder what was created and all that is because of that feeling. I wonder what I'd like to have because of that feeling. And in mastery, I choose that feeling and I start to follow it. How would I feel if I had that in my life? How would this actually feel? Not in the absence of it, but in the inclusion of it. And as I follow that, the universe says, ah, this is a joy seeker now. This is not a sufferer. This is one that wants to create joy. Start sending the good stuff. In the flow comes the good experiences that you're wanting, the things that you've been waiting to happen, the jobs, the relationships, the, uh, the good stuff that you're wanting to come in starts to flow in. And that just shores you up even more. And you get excited. And you think, I am the creator of my experience. What can I get now? What can I do next? How can I focus? What can I follow? And this is fifth dimensional reality. And believe it or not, those that are in the third dimensional reality, they cannot swallow it. They cannot understand how it is possible, but we've just explained to you how it's possible. You get rewarded in such a way that you can no longer deny the creator that you are, and you become in alignment with the universe. And the two of you become one. You become a God in human form. Now, will we all awaken eventually? Uh, and we obviously know, you know, on the planet right now, uh, certain leaders that seems to be in the third dimensional mindset. So yeah. will they eventually also wake up to this yeah. way of... Yeah, uh, there will be, yes, a, a gradual uh, uh, unfolding for everyone. Even those that are not doing the work, the high vibration that's going to flood the plane will affect every being that is on it. Nobody's uh, unworthy. Nobody's getting left behind. And we know that this is a difficult concept for a human wants to condemn. They want to say that person is wrong. That person is bad. That person is undeserving. But we would tell you that everything's coming from one thing. You are the same as those things that you are condemning. So there's no need for you to do that. It's to understand that the level of consciousness that they are at right now does not support the belief or understanding that is needed in order for them to uh, expand. Once this happens, and it will happen, yeah, it'll happen very naturally, just by others that are doing the work, you're going to lift humanity right along with you. And they're all worthy. They are all deserving and they are all coming. Mm. Uh, 
I do see that a lot of other channelers are also speaking about the same, that it seems like, you know, the same teachings are coming again and again, mm -hmm. but somehow sometimes there's a slight difference. Like for instance, uh, I've never interviewed, um, I think she's called Esther Hicks that channels uh, Abraham. Mm -hmm. They have a very specific way uh, of teaching manifestation, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've heard other channelers or, or other channelers channeling beings that sort of have another perspective. And um, when I started out my spiritual journey, I was sort of looking for that one truth of how to do this, how to channel, what's the yeah. truth of the universe. Now, would you agree that uh, all these beings that are being channeled now, then it seems like so many are channeling and uh, people are channeling different beings, that there are different perspectives on teaching, spiritual teachings, and that they all sort of are true at the same time? Yeah. Well, we would say that there are different levels of perception and consciousness that are coming through. Uh, all channelers uh, are different in the level of uh, vibration or what it is that they are transmitting. Yeah. Uh, and what do we primarily teach uh, for manifestation? Love of self. Uh, when one moves into love of self, uh, no condemnation, no judgment here, uh, no regret, no trying to change anything, uh, no trying to control their own experience, no trying to control anyone else's experience. This is love of self, uh, just allowing and surrendering to life as it is. This will open up the field uh, and cause you to have uh, uh, manifestations beyond your wildest dreams, you see. And mm -hmm. so standing in a corner and repeating something over and over again or writing it or catching negative thoughts uh, to us is a waste of time. Uh, negative thoughts are nothing more than a revelation that you are getting from your human counterpart why you're not getting what you want from your divine counterpart. You think about having a lot of money and your human might kick out right away. Well, you're not worthy of it. You're not educated. Uh, your family never had any money. You're too old. And you would say, oh, stop that. I can't do that. I can't have that thought. I'm not going to get what I want. But we would tell you the very reason and the human is giving you that, it's letting you know this is the truth you hold within you. Is it really negative? It's just the truth. Is it really true? Well, you believe it is. When you change that belief and that perception, you can hold something else and you can get something else. Right. That makes sense. Um, I'm curious about something myself. Mm -hmm. Reincarnation. Uh, I believe that I've lived thousands of lives and that's a case for, I don't know, everybody or many of us or maybe some souls have been on earth once and they have re reincarnated on other planets i think everything is possible but what i'm curious about is for instance my soul am i working on the same theme or topic throughout all my lives or is this sort of a new topic that i am engaging myself in in every new incarnation yeah, uh, it will be a continuum, yeah, uh, of what it is that you have accomplished or came here to accomplish and gotten through. Uh, and, and we tell uh, people when you are living in the present moment, how you are feeling and thinking is developing yet the next life and the next life. So you are creating all the time. It never stops. And so as you leave here uh, and the level of completion uh, that you have made or the progress that you have made, you will take that with you, yeah? And then you will add unto that uh, sometimes lineage things, uh, things that others maybe have struggled with and not had success with by your willingness, by your choosing, your deciding, it would be by your decision. And so all of those things will play a factor or a role in what it is that you will come in with uh, in future lifetimes. Yeah, but you are a continuum. Yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, some people that I've spoken to, some of my guests who have had near-death experiences, mm -hmm. they are saying that they have seen on the other side people that are still living. So I'm wondering about if there's a part of us that is on the other side. And then I get curious about who am I? Like, what is a soul? Is the soul the higher self? It's, is that what we call the higher self? And how many parts can a higher self actually split itself into? I know there's a lot of questions there, but if you could yeah. speak a little bit to the soul, what it really is. Yeah. Well, uh, there is a higher uh, aspect of you. Uh, we, we don't know if that's the right word to call it or a uh, 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 an unencumbered 
part of you. Let's use that term. Uh, when a human is living a, a human experience, uh, because of the contrast, uh, they pinch off themselves the flow of the divine. When you leave the body, uh, the energy centers are fully open uh, because you are not uh, constricted uh, by contrast, uh, by what people think of you, by needing money, by uh, all the needs that you have, uh, by the fear of dying. All of these types of things are causing uh, the energy or the vessel to dim a little bit because it can't receive full charge from its divine. And so we would tell people, um, how, how are we different? We're, we're different in a sense that we're unencumbered by those things. So we have a uh, full access or full flow of that divine. Uh, and so in answer to your question, uh, how many places could a uh, human express in one time? Well, that's not really uh, something that we could determine. It would be determinable by the one that was expressing, yeah, in the way that they wanted to express. Uh, and, and they could uh, project their consciousness into a variety uh, of experiences at one time. Um, and, and so we have a little problem sometimes when a question is answered, uh, asked in too many parts. Yeah, uh, we don't like to use Robin's uh, consciousness to contain it. So if we have missed something that you've asked, you may uh, re-say it now. No, actually, I'm very satisfied with the uh, with the answer. And also, sometimes I, I don't know if the question is really important for people, because sometimes I feel like I ask from my mind that I'm very curious and that it's not really important to know. But what I felt right now, I wanted to ask you what uh, was what is your most uh, important message for humanity right now and for everybody listening? Uh, to use your focus sovereignly, to intend how you want to feel, and to be very uh, uh, steadfast and assured and believing that how you feel matters and that you have a great influence over yourself, uh, your population, uh, and the universe as a whole. If you decide to create sovereignly, uh, pick and choose how you want to feel rather than viewing those that are suffering. Uh, let's talk about that just for a moment because it's important. Uh, some people can mistake righteousness as a good thing. Um, they think that a good person uh, doesn't like bad things. Uh, or doesn't, uh, or suffers with those that are suffering. Uh, and this would be a false perception because if it were good, you would feel good as you do it. Uh, this is the ego actually kicking in, uh, making one feel that this is what a good human quote unquote should do. The reality of it is, is the universe is a mirror of you and the way that you feel. And so if it wanted you to suffer with everyone that was suffering, then it would simply uh, mirror back to you more suffering. Yeah, that's what you would get. And so you have to understand that there is no benefit in suffering uh, uh, needlessly. You will have enough of it on your own, quite honestly. Uh, and so the more that you transform yourself out of suffering into a creator of joy and happiness and start to receive that type of feeling and life and keep adding that to the universe, others uh, in your vibration, quite honestly, will rise higher and higher because of it. And you will become a stimulator of all those that you come into contact with. And therefore, this is your uh, energetic emission uh, or contribution uh, to the earth as a whole, you see. And so if we could get you to believe anything here today, it would be to live as though you were on a desert island by yourself and choose how you feel uh, rather than following everyone else in the masses and contributing to how they feel and having that be your experience. You can create your own universe or you can join someone else's. And quite honestly, you could do your own a lot nicer. Could you share what would be then the difference between doing what you just said and being ignorant of what's going on around us? Because I, I don't believe that ignorance is of a high vibration. So what is ignorance and what is actually... Uh, uh, ignorance, uh, it doesn't yeah. have to be called ignorance. Uh, one can view a situation in compassion and understanding. Uh, one can understand that uh, they can't control uh, the lives or the experience of others. They can only control their own. They could have this understanding. Uh, and so in your view, uh, they are ignorant of their own power then. They are ignorant of themselves. What would be worse, uh, to be ignorant of the population of which you have no control over or to be ignorant over yourself and the control that you do have? All right. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's about actually acknowledging or acknowledging that it's happening, but accepting it that yes. I don't have any power, I can't change it. But if I did have power to change it, I would, of course, change it. Of course, you can send love, mm. good intentions, uh, open your heart and pour it out. Yeah. These right. and compassion for what it is they are experiencing. 
We are not telling you to be ignorant of suffering. We are telling you not to join it. Right, right. Yeah, I think that people mix, mix that up, that we mix that up. And I think this is an important conversation. It is. And I think a lot of people are feeling guilty and we really don't know how to cope with it. Yeah. And I remember when I was young, I was thinking, how can I be happy when there's suffering in the world? I wouldn't allow myself to be yeah. happy. Yeah. And so then this going is to be huge. Happy. Yeah. That's Sorry? Okay. Uh, then you're not going to find happiness. That's right. Point. Yeah. And so a human should never feel guilty in their ability to create through joy and happiness mm -hmm. because you are spreading that. You are adding that and you are showing others that they too have the power to create in this way. Yeah. It has taken me a long time to come to it because I've been so stuck in that belief. Yeah. But uh, I, it resonates with me very much right now like where I am at. It takes up a lot of energy uh, from a human and their ability to create uh, when they are lodged in what it means to be a good person, uh, what it means to not be ignorant. Uh, all of those types of uh, perceptions and belief that a human holds uh, enlist them to feel guilty, to feel shameful, uh, to feel as though they are uh, not contributing if they are not suffering. Yeah, you can contribute mm -hmm. to suffering if you want to. Yeah, but we would tell you that there's a whole better way to create uh, through happiness and joy. Uh, and then through that, your vibration will raise and through your vibration raising, others will raise. Uh, and this is the path or the way um, to getting the world that you want to get yeah beautiful thank you so much athena in truth uh thank you yes you're most welcome good day my back all right you're back but well, it's fascinating how you switch like that so quick yeah there's no wait time for me at all it's just instant yeah in and out oh it's my funny God. isn't it so are you aware of what they're saying do you uh or... no i mean like right now I, I, no, it just kind of comes in and, and it's gone immediately. If I would take a second to walk back to the house out of my office and my husband would say, well, how, how did that go? Or what, what did you do? I would not really be able to pull up what, what's transpired. I would have yeah. to watch it again. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I thought that was very helpful and uh, fascinating and uh, an important conversation, actually. Um, what came forward. Um, and I would like to ask you three questions that I ask all my okay. guests. And the first one is what is self love to you? Um, no condemnation, no judgment, no regret, uh, no do over needed An experience experienced is well done. Mm. That's self love. And what is joy to you? Um, is uh, following the preference. Mm. And what is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective? Um, uh, having unification uh, with the divine part of yourself, uh, going through this process and getting to feel um, what that feels like. It, it's something I really wouldn't have wanted to leave this life without. Um, and, and quite honestly, uh, up to 60 years old, I had not known what that felt like. And I would love for as many people as possible to have that happen and to experience life in flow and not in suffering. Hmm. You're a great advocate for that. And speaking of that, how can people reach you? Uh, speak a little bit to your work today. Yeah, um, well, I do private sessions uh, on my website, Athena in Truth. You can book sessions on there. Uh, I do do Kundalini uh, activations and uh, trauma entrapment release uh, from energy centers that goes on during those types of things. And then the one hour sessions are more, um, more uh, personal exchanges about life experiences that they might be having. Um, I do do courses. I have some that are downloadable. We're in the middle of an online course right now. I give a, a free podcast regularly. I have free YouTubes that uh, are available to people and they're all under Athena in truth. I uh, have some meditations on the website, um, a Kundalini course, and there's another one coming up there soon too. Wonderful. This was so much fun. <laughs> it was I great really having you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. And uh, yeah, all the best with your work. You too. Thank you so much. <laughs>